Good morning, everyone. Welcome and welcome to those who join us online. Today is 40 days since Easter. Formerly, we celebrated the Ascension on this Thursday, but uh, our diocese and many uh, have transferred it to Sunday um, so that it aligns with Easter and Pentecost. But nevertheless, we continue to um, celebrate the joy of the risen Lord. Today also, too, we remember Our Lady of Fatima and the uh, appearance to the children in Portugal in 1917, and just look to Mary to continue to guide us and to uh, show us the way through prayer and repentance to continue following her son and putting our hope in his presence. We just gather all of our needs now as we um, enter into a stage of preparing for Pentecost and praying that the gift of the Holy Spirit will be renewed in us and in the church. So with all those intentions in our heart, let us come to the altar of the Lord. gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers, may the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Like Mary, we open up ourselves to God's will, putting our total trust in his love for us and doing our very best to continue following his plan to bring his presence into our world. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. When he opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to, to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians who heard, believed, and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord has.
has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord Lord has revealed revealed to the nations nations his his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord Lord has revealed revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while later and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? So they said, what is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you. You will weep and mourn. While the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't think we find it uh, surprising at all or difficult to understand how confused the disciples were with Jesus' teaching. A little while you're going to see me, a little while you're not going to see me. Because I still find things confusing at times with what God is really trying to say to us. And, And maybe... That's part of the message, is that it calls us to put trust in God's word, even when it may not bring that certainty and stability to our lives that we all like to have. We all like to have things that are clear as a bell. We know exactly what's going to happen. And yet, life isn't like that. The promise is that the Lord is with us always. The last lines of the gospel today I find very meaningful. The world will rejoice and you will have some really hard times. The world will be so happy and you will grieve. And there is the certainly the promise that comes along with that that's certainly implied very, very much throughout the scriptures. Never lose hope. I will never abandon you. 
I will always raise you up. And if we look at our lives, honestly, we can see so many examples of that many times. Um, and I think we, in our humanness, sometimes have had times when we would look around and think everybody else's life is doing so great, or the world has got this and that, and I don't, etc. and life is tough. And yet, there are also times when we come to that honest realization of how blessed we are, how good God is to us. When I was uh, just reflecting a little bit on Our Lady of Fatima, just fact that it happened in 1917 strikes me that was the time of the last pandemic and certainly these have been extraordinarily difficult times for everyone not just people who try to be followers of Christ and live their faith sometimes even harder for others who don't have anything to hold on to the truth of the matter is that it's, at least my experience, it's not just that the hope is in eternal life, which it is, but just think about what we have as our tools of faith during this pandemic time that have brought us strength, meaning, and helped us to see the, the goodness and the glory of God even through difficult and challenging times. Our world is a mess. So I wouldn't say, you know, look how good the world has it and here we are suffering. It's almost the opposite. We at least have that opportunity for the peace that Christ can bring in Christ alone. We at least have that opportunity to find stability and security in our faith and in community. Those are the things, ultimately, I think, that assure hope and peace in our lives. Whatever stages we are in, and it may be different for each of us, and it certainly will be different at different times in our life journey, the message is the same, and that is God is always with us. We can't always feel his presence in the same way, but he's always there. We don't always have sometimes the, um, the feelings of hope and joy that we wish we always had, but we know that the Lord is there doing great things for us. And so if there is um, any message that I'm hearing in these confusing readings and confusing times, it's just that. Never lose hope. Always know that God is with us. So let us trust him with all our needs. We pray for the church that we may be a beacon of hope, especially in a world that is broken, scattered, and afraid that we may bring that gift of hope and peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray that our community may be renewed and reinvigorated by the gift of the Holy Spirit to be true disciples and proclaimers of the good news to others, especially those who are filled with sadness and pain in their lives, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are sick or suffering, broken, bereaved, searching, longing, or in despair. That the light of Christ that we continue to celebrate and share may bring new life to them, we pray to the Lord. We pray that our children, young adults, and children with special needs will feel God's love and protection. We pray for parents, grandparents, teachers and administrators and all those who are called to shape the lives of our young people and bring them God's love and protection, we pray to the Lord. Remember all those who have gone before us, our family members and friends and parishioners. We pray for Father Dan Redmond, pastor of St. Mary Chardon, for George Malik, the 
father of Mary von Karlowitz and her whole family. And we pray in a special way today for Margaret Connolly and for her family. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we have so many things to give thanks to you for. We especially thank you for the gift of faith and the gift of community. Guide us through these times. Help us to always be focused on your light. Renew within us that gift of your spirit and that gift of hope. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has arisen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all who serve your church. Remember Margaret Connolly and all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My friends, may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. With all our hearts, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks, everyone, for 
sharing in this celebration this morning. Have a wonderful day. Um, certainly um, at Mary's invitation and during this month of May and on this feast, I encourage you perhaps to take some time today to pray the rosary, to meditate on those mysteries that bring us salvation and hope. So have a great day and let's go in peace, glorifying God by our lives.